Welcome to the slideshow for Unit 4. We're going to talk about some basic measurements here. We're not going to go overboard in terms of being able to convert everything to everything, but we'll take a look at some of the ones we use and talk about in the course this semester. Uh, topics here are coming from uh, Chapter 1 still. Uh, section 1.7, I believe it is, the International System of Units, the way we measure things. Typically, we're going to talk a little bit about the current definitions of the seven base system of SI units. We're going to talk about the uh, exponential notation a little bit and talk about metro prefixes and their interconversions. The SI system is uh, the international, it's actually the international system A or something like that in French, uh, but we turn around and call it SI. It's actually System International A and we call it SI, but we call it the international system. It was adopted about 1960. Uh, folks got together and said we need to really come to grips with our measurement to make sure we're consistent in how we do our measurement back and forth. And of course it's helped some, but it hasn't helped a lot because we're all humans, we do things differently in the end. But the main units, when you sat back and thought about the things you have to measure, you'd be surprised at the list. It's uh, You see it up here in front of you, so you won't be that surprised. But for example, you might think volume is something you measure, but really volume is a derived unit in the sense it comes from measuring a length times a length times a length area is the same thing. Density is the same thing. They are all derived from other units. There are seven base units that we look at. One of them is the length, one is the mass, one is the time, temperature, the amount of substance, the electric current, and the luminous intensity, which is basically the brightness. Now if you and I were going to sit down and figure out what the best unit of length, we'd probably come up with something like the inch, the foot, the yard, something like that. But you might notice that most of the world doesn't do that this way. They deal with the metric system, so we actually shift heavily into the metric system for our SI units. We have the meter as unit of length, and that base unit of length, it's about a meter long. A kilogram, they're about two pounds in a kilogram. So a kilogram is bigger than a pound is. You look something like that. Notice the abbreviations M for meter, kg for kilogram. That's the base unit of mass in the metric system. The second is what you know as the second. Kelvin is a temperature unit. That was one you may not have heard of before. You're used to Fahrenheit. You've probably heard of Celsius also. Celsius is sort of like, like a version of Kelvin. Kelvin is what's called an absolute temperature scale. We'll run into him a little bit. Zero Kelvin is the bottom temperature of the universe. You can't get any colder than that. Uh, so we'll see him a little bit further on, but he's the base unit we use in uh, measuring temperatures. The mole is a substance you'll be, uh, units you'll become familiar with this semester because we'll be talking about the mole. My favorite abbreviation is the mole. We take the four-letter word and we drop it off here to a three-letter word and save ourselves writing a whole letter E to abbreviate it that way. The ampere is electric current. You've probably heard of that around the house. How many amps you have. Your breakers are so many amps, 30 amps, 20 amps, whatever. When they shut off, the abbreviation for that is an A. And then candela is where you measure brightness. Although you might have heard of lumens. Uh, we talk about light bulbs a lot now. All the different types of light bulbs. And I'll talk about the brightness in those. The candela is a SI unit. It's abbreviated as CD. And you might look at these and go, well, so what do you care about these? These are how scientists typically start thinking about units. Now, in special areas, they'll start making up other units that are, come from these. But you'll find out after a while, especially if you ever move into physics, it's really helpful to stay in the SI system because it, things come out very smoothly if you can do that. So if we look at the current definitions, we have seven SI units <coughs> Excuse me, that we're looking at. Uh, we're going to look at six of them right here, and then I'll throw in the other one in a moment. But six of the units have very well-defined, and those somewhat abstract descriptions. When I say somewhat abstract, it means you're not going to do this in your garage. Look at the second up here. The second is the duration of 9,192,631,770 periods of radiation corresponding to the transition between the two hyperfine levels of the ground state of the cesium-133 atom. <sighs> like that. That doesn't mean a whole lot to you, but that's a precise definition. Atomic clocks are able to track this very well. That's why we have atomic clocks. They just upgraded the atomic clock, and now it's good to like one in ten, one second in 10 million years or something like that. Uh, but it's not a good excuse for being late anywhere. If you're, you know, the atomic clock's not, nobody cares about billions of a second. The meter. We think of a yardstick as being about a meter long. You think about that stick being about that long. We need a precise definition of the meter. The meter is defined like this. Okay, it's one three hundred millionth basically of a second. Uh, that the distance that light travels one three hundred millionth of a second. So those two have very precise definitions. Four of the others gives us a total of six. Have similar.
precise definitions. This slide just kind of gives you a sense of what that looks like. This is a from the National Institutes of Standard and Technology. The unit of length gives you what the meter is up here. It's what you just saw in that slide. The kilogram will skip for now. Unit time is a second. What we just saw, the current is the current that flows a certain period of time. It's a certain, certain anyway, it comes down to a very specific measurement. The Kelvin is also very specific the mole is and the candela are all very specific well-defined physical definitions so you can go somewhere and set that up and you've got that measurement you know what that is that's all from as i said the national institutes of standard and technology interesting enough the kilogram one of the more familiar ones is the one that's the only one that's not precisely defined he's actually called a prototype standard and so down here in this vessel here you've got a glass jar here glass jar here inside you see the little metal thing on the inside that's the kilogram he's sitting on a pillow over there in France being a kilogram he's it he's a, he's the basis of commerce basically if it comes right down to it he resides in France he's also there are prototypes throughout the world we have uh, copies of it throughout the world we have some in, uh, here at National Institute of Standard Technology all very very close certainly more precisely than ever us any of us need to really know there was a concern in 2007 when they figured out that this prototype standard had somehow lost about 50 millionths of a gram in a period of 100 years. And that was quite a concern because this is supposed to be always the same. Well, it turns out that's about the mass of a fingerprint. It lost in 100 years and it caused consternation. And so it's kind of a critical thing for us. There is work being done. We're probably not very far from having a good physical definition of the kilogram. There are several efforts along those lines. <coughs> so. Let's take a look at exponential notation. It may not have been one of your favorite things in the world. Um, I think it might be in Appendix A2. I'm not sure. Uh, looking at the SI base units, we give a really strong sense that we're going to be dealing with a metric system. And I know that's probably not something that you may be your favorite, but you just kind of have to get used to it a little bit. We don't need to know the whole thing, but once you know a little bit of it, you actually do know pretty much the whole thing. Uh, it depends a whole lot on us being able to maneuver the decimal point in a number, move it back and forth. Powers of 10 is what it's all about. And so as you look at some of the numbers we'll see during the semester, we talk about Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number is a 6.023. It's a 6023, and then it's followed by like 20 zeros after that three. That's a lot, and you want to keep writing it that way, so we have to get some sense of how we can work with those numbers. So let's take just a quick look. Let's go back and try to remember some of our knowledge of exponential notation from our earlier years. You probably have seen it somewhere. And if you go back and think about it, it's all based on our on our base 10 system, where basically things are 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. That's where our decimal places come from. So if you look at a simple example, the number 10, I could write out as being 1 times 10 to the first power. 10 to the 1 power is just 10 by itself, 10 by 1, and so it looks like this. If I look at 100, that's really 10 by 10, or I could also write out and say that's the same thing as 1 times 10 squared. And 1,000 is 10 times 10 times 10 three times, you can kind of see that developing. You might notice in each case that the exponent here matches the number of zeros you have after the 1 over there on the left-hand side. 3 over here, and 3 zeros on this side here. If you look over on this side, we're going to the smaller side. Now I take 1 divided by 10, I get 1 times 10 to the minus 1. Because remember, if it's in the denominator, it's got a negative sign in the exponent. 0.01 becomes 1 times 10 to minus 2. 0.01 becomes 1 times 10 to minus 3. Okay, and so you kind of have, hopefully have that sort of somewhere in your <coughs> memory banks that you can pull back a little bit. Uh, notice as you look at these that if I wanted to go back back and forth and when I have 10 to the 1 what's telling me here is it's telling me I have to move the decimal point one place and if I start with the decimal point right here after the 1 I'm going to move it one place over to the right to get to this 10 over here so on this side I'm moving the decimal place to the right to recover my number from scientific notation here I have to move it two places to the right so if I start with my 1 right here I'm going to move it 1 2 and I'll have my 100 and here's 3 and I'll have my 100 there on the other side if I start here and with my decimal point right there, minus 1, I move it to the left, so it comes back this way, 1 place, and there's my point 1, similar for 0 0.01 and 0 0.001 as well. So just kind of keep that pattern in mind. The minuses, 10 of the minuses, are meaning these are getting smaller, and the 10 of the pluses, are meaning this number to recover is going to be compared. Now, all these numbers are all exactly the same. This is, all the numbers in this string are exactly the same number. We're not changing that. We're just changing how we represent it. 
So let's look at some conversions. So if I number like this, 63,410 meters, I want to get that into scientific notation. One of the things we do in getting scientific notation is write this number, pretend there's a decimal point right here. I'm going to take that decimal point, I'm going to move it one, two, three, four places until my number is between one and 10. So now it looks like 6.3410, which is what I've written over here. Since I moved it four places and I moved it four places to the left, what that means now is that I'm going to have a 10 to the fourth showing me I've moved it four places. If I look at 145.6 seconds, I'm going to take my decimal point here, move them back one, two places to the left to get between one and 10. I write my 1.456 and that's times 10 to the, now I've moved it two places to the left, it's going to be times 10 to the plus two. And over here, this guy, if I want to get him between 1 and 10, I'm moving him 1, 2, 3 places to the right now. So I'm still going to write 3.89, but I'm going to say that since I had to move it 3 places the other way, it's going to be a minus 3 up here for my power of 10. And then in this one, we're going the other way. If I have 9.87 times 10 to the 4, that means I have to multiply it. Basically, I'm multiplying it by 10,000. So it's going to be 1, 1, 2, 3, 4 places over here and gives me this value. And on this side, uh, 5.12 times 10 minus 5, I have to move it 5 places, and the question is, though, which way do I move it? Well, since it's a minus sign, I'm move it backwards, move it to the left, and it's going to go from being a 5.12 here to a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over on that side. And so it's a matter of being able to move those, those uh, decimal places around. Now, one of, one of the wonders of the metric system is there's a set of prefixes that's the same all the time. For us, we have inches, feet, yards, and miles, but that's different than ounces and quarts and gallons and pints and all that kind of stuff. They're different from each other. The conversions are different. The metric system, they're all the same. So no matter what you have in the metric system, if you use a prefix that says kilo, it means that you're talking about 10 to the third. Always means the same. Kilometer, kilogram, kilosecond, kilo whatever. It's always going to be the same. <clears throat> and these you don't need to know all of these the ones you'll become familiar with in the course will be the kilogram the base unit is whether it's a meter gram whatever it is you're putting the prefix in front of as the base unit deci centi and milli are ones you hear about these up here the teras gigas and megas you never used to hear about those but now if you buy computers at all you hear about that kind of stuff all the time uh, down below you may have heard of nanos Nanos are 10 to the minus 9th. A lot of interesting materials development goes on in the nanoscale field. And so we'll be running into these as we go. Notice here in the way it's set up is that this is 0, there's 3, 6, 9, and 12. They go by 3's up there. Down here we're pretty much 1, 2, 3, and then we start going by 3's. 3, 6, and 9. Big ones right in here. The kilo down to the milli are the ones that you'll most likely see. Now, if I want to make conversions back and forth, I made this little table, see if it helps at all. Instead of doing a whole bunch of math stuff, we'll do it this way. And if I look in here, what I'll see is that my prefixes are here, Terra, all the way down through here. The exponential expression for it is right here, 10 to the 12th, 9th, whatever. And this is the abbreviation for it. Notice the, the case of the letter makes a difference. A lowercase m is a milli, an uppercase m is a mega. So pay attention <coughs> to those when you do metric conversion. Now, what the arrows are intended to show you is if I wanted to go from a from a terra something to convert it into millis, what it tells me I'm going to take and move my decimal point to the right to go from a big number to a small number. Remember, if I'm a big number, I wonder how many small numbers are in that number is getting bigger, isn't it? Okay, so what'll happen with it if I have 15 terabytes, I wonder how many millimeters. There's going to be a whole bunch of millimeters because millimeters are small. So I'm going to move the decimal point to the right. The number of places I move it is given simply by the difference between the exponents. If I want to go from tera to milli, this is a 12 up here. And I'm here in the milli, this is a minus 3. If you take a 12 minus a negative 3, going back to your number line days, you're going to move, you can be times 10 to the 15th. Okay, that's a 10 to the 15th change. You're taking something and multiplying by 10 to the 15th. You take whatever number you had, multiply by 10 to the 15th, and that's your new number. If you're going the other way, upwards on here, going from a smaller number to a bigger number, there's certainly not going to be as many of them. If I have to start out with feet, I don't know how many miles are in 10 feet, there's certainly not as many miles in 10 feet as there are 10 feet. The, ten, the magnitudes are going to be different. Let's look, look at some examples on the next page. And here's my, uh, I want to convert 42,600 meters into kilometers. Okay, so to do that, 
I look over and think about meters to kilometers. So I'm going to go from meters to kilometers. Here's my meters right in here. That's my base unit. And we'll go to kilometers. So I'm going up. So if I'm going up, I'm going to move to the right. I'm so sorry, move to the left. Right here. If I move up here, up to there, move to the right, I'm going to move to the I'm sorry, move to the left. Move to the left by three decimal places because three minus zero is three. And so all I did was take the decimal place and went one, one, two, three places, and there's my answer in kilometers. I'm going to go from kilometers to centimeters. My kilometers start out here still. My centimeters are all the way down here. Now the difference between those two is three and minus one, so oh, centi, was it centi? Three and minus two, so three minus the negative two is five. So move it five places again. I'm going from kilo to centi down here. So I move it to the right. So I move it five places to the right. One, two, three, four, five. It gives me the two zeros I have on the end. 350 milliliters to, to liters. Uh, start with my millis down here, right there. Go to my liters. My base unit is up here. So that means I'm moving up. I'm going to move left this time. And I'm going to move minus 3 and 0 is 3 places. I'm going to move 3 places left and I get my 1, 2, 3. And then the last one, we have deciseconds to centiseconds. Kind of a strange sounding unit, but it still works the same. Deci to centa means I'm moving down. So I'm going to move to the right. And the difference between deci and centi is going to be simply... Uh, deci and centi is simply 1. It's so minus 1 and minus 2 is 1. So I'm just taking, multiplying basically by 10 to the 1 power, which is the same thing as 10 to the 34 times 10 to the 1 is 10 to the 35. I don't think I could probably write that out in any intelligible way, but let me see. Uh, 10. So if I have... Okay, if I have this, you may remember this from your scientific notation, notation days. 10 to the 34. I'm just basically multiplying the whole thing by 10 to the 1. And all I do when I multiply is I add exponents. And there's probably a better way, but I think you get the idea. Oh, this is supposed to be a 1. Now I'll do it over here. I'm sure that clarified everything right there. Okay, so it looks like this. 10 to the 1 times 10 to the minus 34 equals 10 to the 35. You just add the exponents up. Okay? All right. Then, no, I have to get out of here. There we go. That's the end. So that's your unit four. Talks about measurement. Unit five, we'll talk a little bit more about some combined measurements like volumes and things of that nature.